Okay, so we're going to look at apical meristem differentiation. We'll start with a typical apical meristem cell. And if you recall, that looks basically like a little cube in the meristem. So this would be at the shoot tip or the root tip. And, and we have just a nucleus inside that cube, really. So this cell has the ability to become any other cell within the plant. So um, this is known as, let's see, this is an apical meristem cell. And it could be uh, described as totipotent or omnipotent, all powerful. So the cell could become any other cell in the plant body. So our first kind of step is vacuolization. And of course, this whole process requires water. So we're going to uptake water, expand the vacuoles inside. And those will continue to expand and merge, pushing that nucleus up against the cell wall. There's our nucleus still. And at this point, it's probably still undergoing expansion. So we'll just color in those vacuoles. So we've got the vacuoles, and those have enlarged. We still have our nuclei. And so we're now putting down secondary cell wall inside of our primary cell wall. And at this point, cell expansion is still possible. So we're going to put that into a format that is still somewhat expandable. So you'll generally have um, rings, springs, spirals, helical shape, things like that. The primary cell wall differs a little from the secondary cell wall and that it's still kind of flexible. You can kind of think about this as um, a stretchy fabric as opposed to a rigid fabric. Um, one of the reasons why you have this difference is that in the primary cell walls um, its rigidity is due to things like pectin, whereas in the secondary cell walls, it has lignin has been added, which makes it a much more rigid structure. All right, so after that occurs, the vacuolization um, happens, we get deposition of the secondary cell wall and then expansion continues and so the primary and secondary cell wall start to stretch so this is our secondary wall in there it starts to stretch because the cells beside it are elongating, those that are still younger. So we're still growing 
So these springs stretch further and further. We also get the breakdown of the nucleus. So the nucleus is going to disintegrate and be reabsorbed. And this is followed by cell death. So at maturity, the vessel element, tracheids, fibers, anything with that secondary cell wall, they're actually going to be dead at maturity, but their function still persists because of that rigidity in the secondary cell wall maintains the shape and form of that cell.